Today I'm going to speak on the subject, Jesus, the reason for Christmas. Jesus, the reason for Christmas. I'm sure these are stories that you would know, but we need to remind ourselves. Otherwise, we go to autopilot, and then we just go through the motions, and we look for the next thing to come. Uh, Pastor Orin has picked up some of the verses that I'm going to speak about, but nonetheless, I'll bring one or two before you. My main key verse is from Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. All oh, the children will be going, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> first step and course, if you are up to five years old, if you are up to ten years old, please, um, you have your special service where you can assess the word of God at your own level so that you can enjoy it better than to sit in here. Um, please, if you are one to five or five to ten, are you going upstairs into your class and you're going to have fun uh, with your teachers? Thank you, teachers, for volunteering to do this with us. Thank you so, so much. Uh, those upstairs, you can walk on the balcony right through those doors and you can go. They don't have to come down to climb up again. Thank you. But make sure you lock the door behind you, though. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. We thank God we have children in this church. It's Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Those are my key verses that I want to read to you. So then the angel said to them, was talking to the shepherds, said, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will, be, which will be to all people. For there is born to you in this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Do not be afraid. I want to repeat this word to you. Do not be afraid. All around us, there's every potential, every reason for us to be afraid. But the word of God says, do not be afraid. I believe that the time that Jesus was born were quite similar to where we are right now. But for the COVID-19 or the coronavirus and its variant, which was not there, but it was very similar it was a time of uncertainty. It was a time that people were living under fear and oppression. Many went about their lives without God, just like we do here. Those who were supposed to know God had lost their way. And many have lost their way indeed. Who's supposed to know God in this country? But for the few like Simeon and Anna, I remember Pastor Ben preaching about it last week. Simeon and Anna, who were still hopeful of the consolation of Israel, they look for the intervention of God. They look for a time that God will bring calmness into the chaos and the uncertainty and the fear. And what they look for and forward to was for good news. Because yesterday I was just listening to the news and they said, what, 90,000 what people affected by the current Omicron variant of the virus. I'm thinking 90,000 is not a small people. You're talking about the whole of West Greenwich, people affected. Putting that in context, and that is a lot of people. And some are dying. And you listen to news like this, and you'll be wondering what is next? Who is next? What's happening? I just want you to know that the time that Jesus Christ was born, the world was like that, but for the virus. It was like, who is next? What is next? But then there is hope for us. And the hope, as in Luke 2, 10, he said, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Jesus is good news to all people. Jesus came not only for people in West Greenwich 
or London or United Kingdom, but he came for all people. Hallelujah. He is good news. He entered a world like us where there was much darkness. And all around, he brought hope. So if you are thinking about Christmas today, I just want you to know the reason why Jesus Christ was born and the reason why you and me need to remember and the reason why you and me need to think about Christmas to be celebrated is that someone called Jesus Christ was born into a world of darkness, a world of hopelessness, and he brought hope. Shall we read this from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2? That was 700 years before Jesus Christ was born. The prophet Isaiah made a pronouncement. He prophesied, he spoke as God's spokesperson to tell us what is happening. And he said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You see, today we sit and we dwell in the shadow of darkness, of death. Isn't that true? And I just want you to remember, and for if you hear you're anti-vaxxer, anti-COVID, anti-whatever it is, I think you are not thinking right. Because that is not true. The virus is so real. Hear me now. The virus is so real. It really does kill people. And as a church, I would like you to learn to take the necessary precautions, obey the various protocols, and do what is expected of you if you do not want to die before your time. Did you get that? Exactly. So, I just want you to understand that there is something real happening. And there's great darkness upon our world, upon our nations, and upon our community. There's great darkness. There's great heaviness. Every now and then, I mean, I was reading that in Netherlands from Sunday, meaning today, they are going to have a lockdown. And I'm thinking, what is left of life? And we have plan B and plan C and whatever you're thinking. And we're thinking of locking this down. We're thinking of these people not going out. A whole lot of restrictions. What is left of life? It's darkness everywhere. And this is where Jesus Christ comes in. So Christmas gives us hope of lightness. Hallelujah. It gives us hope that a light, those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shone. Those who are thinking, oh God, I'm going to die. Many people are in hospital now, affected by a virus. They don't know what their fate is. Some are thinking, oh God, is that the end of them? But the Bible says, upon them a light has shined. Hallelujah. And this is because of Jesus Christ. He brought hope into our hopeless situation. Christmas is approaching, and during this time, people like to decorate their, make, decorate their homes. I must say there's nothing wrong with that. I came back, and one of my daughters has done some decorations in my home. I wasn't even thinking of spending. It looks so beautiful, and I'm thinking, oh, there's Christmas. Decoration is good, right? So it brings some hope because sometimes it's so boring. You're used to the same carpet, same curtain, same everything. You need some light there. And Jesus Christ brings that light. So many people would like to decorate their homes. They would like to, I mean, I mean, buy their Christmas trees, give their cards and hand out gifts. But unfortunately, the true reason for Christmas has been lost in most homes today. It's all lost in our Christmas trees. It's all lost in our gifts. It's all lost in our cards. It's all lost in the food that we're going to eat. It's all lost in the parties. Probably not many parties now. It's all lost in our gatherings. It's all lost in our fanfare and lights. But there's a reason for Jesus Christ. What we should really be celebrating during these days and seasons is that Jesus, the Son of God, was born among us. Hallelujah. Jesus, the Son of God, was born among us. But who is this Jesus, in case you don't know? Or maybe you know, but you've forgotten. He, for you, probably, he's a swear word. Or for you, it's just, yeah, I'm getting to it. I'm getting used to it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus in response to a question from one of his disciples about the way to God. This is how he described himself. Jesus said to him in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says this, I am the way. 
I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So in times like this, in times like this, that in the world of uncertainty, in the world of fear, in the world of anxiety, world of darkness, world of restrictions, and world of no freedom to do what you have to do, a world that, I mean, it's not normal to be wearing masks all the time. Isn't that right? Because you need to breathe. But then it will help you if you have it on in a close community like this. So, in a world like this, we just come to a point to understand that we need Jesus. We need to know him. And we need to have a way to God. And this, this world cannot solve all our problems. I have sat down in the last two years, or maybe 2020, from the 22nd of March 2020, up to this time, it has proven to me that the world has not all the solutions. Not even science. Not even politics. Not even money. Not even our possessions cannot solve all that we have. We've lost so many, 157,000 of our citizens, all our people in this nation, they've just died. Some have left a lot of world, some have left nothing, and they're gone. And I just want you to know that we need Jesus. So Christmas is a very hopeful time for you and me, for us to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Now let's look at these three things and break it down a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not going to do one a long, long preach, but I just want you to break this down and see it. So that Jesus is the way. The way represents direction. To walk in the right direction, we must know that there is only one way. If you are walking the one direction, then there's only one way. You cannot have many directions and thinking you are on the right way. Not two or three ways. Once we find the way, we will find the truth. Amen? Amen. Once you find the way, you find the truth. In case you want to go to Dartford, that's that kind of place that I live in. There are many ways to go. But I can assure you that if you find the way, which is the A2 and it is clear, you'll get there fast. <laughs> True or not, my brother David, you live close to me so you understand that. Sometimes when there's so much traffic, you better stay on the A2 because everybody's wiser than you using the <laughs> other, other roads and then it gets clogged up. So there's only one way. When you find the way, you will find the truth. So today, if you're here and you find the way, you'll find the truth. Hallelujah. What is the truth? Jesus is the truth. What is truth? Truth is the highest level of reality. Hear it again. Truth is the highest level of reality because truth is eternal. Amen. It's the highest level of reality. Truth is eternal. Why is it important to know that Jesus is the truth? Because in life, we are presented with many facts. And facts often changes. Just like the situation with our COVID-19 virus and the various mutations and interpretations thereof. One day is that, another day is Omicron, another day is, I mean, South East England version, another day is Brazilian version, same virus. Facts, but facts are changing. Solution is, I mean, Pfizer, I mean, Pfizer vaccine or AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson. They are facts, but facts changes. Are you with me? Yes. Truth is the highest level of reality because truth is eternal. And it's important that we know that. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The times we live in must be established in truth and not just facts, for facts will change over time. Amen? Amen. Facts will change over time. And I just want to remind you and remind you again. So, what can we say about that? We say that Jesus is also life. Let's read 
John chapter 5, verse 26. The gospel of John chapter 5, verse 26. John chapter 5, verse 26. He says, for as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. That's Jesus Christ saying this, that he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But even as the Father has life in himself, he has also granted me to have life in myself. But what is life that Jesus Christ is talking about? So this Christmas day, the story that I'm telling you and the message I'm bringing it to you that we must choose life. And what is life? Life here is Zoe. Right? Translated from the Greek to mean possession of vitality. Amen? Life means, Zoe, or life means possession of vitality. Jesus Christ possesses vitality, and when you have him, you have vitality, you have reality. I mean, Zoe, or life here means abundant life. The life of God and the Spirit. A life of quality. So when you have Jesus, you have the life of God. You have the life of the spirit. You have the quality of life with you. Amen? Amen. That is what we are talking about when we are talking about Christmas. It is good to eat. I'm sure I will eat on Christmas Day. I don't know what they've planned for me, but I hope nice. Always nice. And I don't know what you've been planning. I'm not against drinking. I'm not against, I mean, partying. I'm not against having gifts. But all what I'm saying is that we need something, a life of quality. We need some possession of vitality. We need abundant life. We need the life of God and life of the Spirit. And this Christmas, have you thought about having the life of God and life of the Spirit in your life? Have you thought about that? It is easy for us to pray during, I mean, a Christmas meal. But the rest of the year, we forget about that nice thing to do, to do, religious thing to do. But we are talking about real life. When you have Jesus in your life, you have God's life within you. When you have Jesus in your life, not knowing about Jesus. In this church, we don't talk about theories no more. We talk about our reality. Yeah. Our experience, what we have experienced, what we have handled, what we have seen, what we have heard. What we have, what we practice is what we also teach you. According to 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, we teach you that our fellowship is first with the Lord and then with each other. So we don't want to be hypocrites in this church. What we are not doing, we can't teach you. So here we are saying that when you have Jesus in your life, you have God's life within you. Without Jesus, life is meaningless and empty. I know that for sure. When you miss the mark, when you transgress, when you trespass, and you're somebody who knows God, from that moment you feel so empty. You feel so meaningless. You feel like, what is life about? Suddenly you feel so lonely. Is that only me who has problems like that? I'm sure a few of you do. But I just want you to know that without Jesus, life is meaningless and empty. Only through Jesus can we find satisfaction and purpose in our lives. Jesus came to give us meaning and satisfaction to life. So Christmas is for us to embrace Jesus for meaning and satisfaction to life. As I said, sometimes in one sense, not that I'm happy that there's a virus in this country, because it's taking some loved ones, people that I love so much and I care so much about. It's taking some of your loved ones too. And it's painful and it's hurtful. But it has taught me that true life is in Jesus. It has taught me that true meaning is in Jesus. It has also taught me that there is something powerful about our God. That some of you have been to be on the, on the, uh, on the whatever, I see you and literally at the point of the, the valley of shadow of death and you've come back because Jesus Christ is salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. In this church, we have prayed for people who were that close to death and have come back. We have prayed for people whom they've removed the oxygen. They say, come on, that's your turn to go. And we prayed and they've come back. It taught me that this Jesus Christ is the way the truth, and the life. And this Christmas, 
I just want you to know that this Jesus Christ is real. Hallelujah. This Jesus is real, and I want you to recalibrate your mind, re-energize yourself, and think again that do I know this Jesus? If I know him, do I experience him? Do I know him up close and personal? Do I have a relationship with him? If I don't have a relationship with him, then I only know him here. I don't really know him in my heart. Do you understand that? And unless you know this Jesus Christ in your heart and you live a life of God, then you are missing so Mark, this world is not our home. We're all passing through. I've never seen any person who's been on this, in this world and live and live and live. Even Methuselah even died. So I just want to use the oldest person recorded in the Bible. He lived for over 900 years. I don't know how he walked about. But then he lived for a long, long time. He died. So one day you also die. So ask yourself, what is the purpose and the meaning of life for you? What are you doing with your life whilst you're here? Jesus is the way. You cannot put your faith in science. Science changes. You saw how we struggle at the outset of the virus. And by God's grace, we found some solution. And now we are getting the booster. And even they are saying we are not sure. Now we're getting the flu virus. They say we are not sure. It helps, but I just want to know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Whilst you have life, make sure you connect yourself properly, seriously with him. Let this Christmas be a defining moment for you. Jesus came to give meaning and satisfaction to our lives. Even when things seem so grim, he came to give meaning to life. When things seem so grim, when we're in so much in the lockdown, and when nobody walk our streets, the first time that I walked the street, I was thinking, am I in the same country? It looks so strange. For the first time, I was actually scared. My own area, I didn't see nobody. I was thinking, where am I now? Is it right to walk the street? And yet we're supposed to go out and have exercise. That is when I know and I knew that one needs something more than just what you have physically, financially, cerebrally, socially, but we need Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, I just want to encourage you guys that in your merriment this Christmas, remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. We should worship Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus became a man and was born on earth, like you and me, to save us from our harsh realities of life. And most importantly, the eternal damnation that we deserve for our sins. Because the Bible says the soul that sin will die. The soul that, dis I mean, that disobey God will die. The soul that does not do I mean, right, will, will pay a consequence. Of course, there is consequence for everything that we do. Isn't that true? There is a consequence. Even in our country, there is a consequence for every wrong to no disobedience, I mean, disregard to the law of this land. So why wouldn't God, the Heavenly Father, he also said the same thing, and he said that. So let's move on here. So let us see how the wise men, the Magi, did it centuries ago. How did they worship this Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Let's read from Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, and then 10 to 11. This is my penultimate Bible verse that I'm going to read. And it says that, Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, Determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Turn it to verse 10 for me, please. When they saw the star... They rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with, the, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gifts of gold, frankincense, 
and Mer. This is how the major or the wise men did it. The wise men worshipped Jesus Christ with three gifts. Let's look at these three gifts quickly. They worshipped Jesus Christ with gold, symbolizing royalty and majesty. They worshipped Jesus Christ as king and lord of the universe. They came from the east. That was then the center of civilization and knowledge at the time. So hear me, civilization and knowledge did not start from the west. It started from the east. That is historical fact. But civilization moved around, right? That's history. And therefore, we are privileged in the west to also have civilization. But in time, even in, even, 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 even in spite of our civilization, just like the Magi, we still have to look for Jesus Christ. We have to follow the sign. And this Christmas is a sign for each one of you that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come to bring meaningful life to you and me. So we should also come and worship him. So they came to worship the royalty. They worship his majesty. They worship Jesus as king and lord of the universe. Now, Frank says. Symbolizing worship, they recognize Jesus as God to be worshipped. I mean, the Bible tells us, if you read Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, it says, now his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us, right? Yeah. And you go to all the way back to Isaiah, I mean, chapter 7, you see that they talked about him, that a virgin shall be with a child and give birth to a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Think about it, 700 years before Jesus Christ was born. Each time I talk about Isaiah, I remember that it's 700 years before Christ was born, that this message was given. It was a long, long time before it was fulfilled. So sometimes if you are sitting here and you're thinking, that, okay, Jesus Christ is blah, 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 blah. It's taking a long time. It doesn't mean anything to me. I want you to know that 700 years it took for this prophecy to be fulfilled. So you haven't lived that, <laughs> that long yet, have you? So whatever God says in the Bible is going to be fulfilled field one day. And I want you to get that into your bones. That today are we going to worship Jesus Christ? Are we going to worship him as God here on this earth? Are we going to see him as peace peace and goodwill among men? Are we going to see that he is God who has come into our world so that we can worship him? Now shall we, I mean, look at the mirror. The mirror which symbolizes suffering. This was the first sign on earth that the Son of Man, Jesus, had come to die to redeem us and to pay the debt of our sin in full. So even before he went onto the cross, the Magi, I don't know what moved them. I don't know what was in them. But some of them were scientists. Some of them were even magicians. Some of them were wise men from royalty, from kinsley background and everything. And these people came with some knowledge and did what they did and gave us that meaning that one day this Jesus Christ will come and die for us. And this is the ultimate gift that God will give us. Jesus is God's very gift to the world. So we should receive him with great joy this Christmas. My last Bible verse that I want to quote to you is John chapter 3, verse 16. Some of you may be very familiar with it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This Christmas, do you believe in God? Not just knowing that Jesus Christ has been born, but do you believe in Jesus Christ? This Christmas... Are you just going to celebrate it? Some see it as a holiday. They call it bank holidays because the banks are not going to, I mean, go to work anymore, right? See, but they still take your money if you spend. You see, so it's not a holiday at all. So then, some, some sort of break for us. I mean, it's bank holiday. Some see it that way. Some see that, hey, this is the time that I should take my annual leave. This is the time that I should visit. Blah, blah, blah. They are all good things to do. 
But I want you to know this Christmas means more than that. It shows that God gave his only son. He gave it to the world. His very love that he showed us. That we, even in this coronavirus environment, Jesus Christ is a reality for each one of you. That if we hung, hang on to him, there is hope. If we hang on to him, there is hope. If we hang on to him, there is meaning. If we hang on to him, one day, we will look back and not regret. I look back nearly two years ago. The lockdown came. I was so strong. Days after that, I don't know what hit me. I was literally mortified with the virus. The worst of it, that time, you couldn't. People couldn't even get a chance to go to hospital. And some of us, when you go to hospital, you know that you come back in your coffin. And there's a hospital so close to me. That is when I knew and I realized and I understood that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. It became my reality. That at that point, I cried unto him and said, God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are my reality. I remember just telling the story again. That people come to my family came to my room and they tiptoed just to be there. Every other day, they just come and say, get up to change your, uh, your, 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 your bed linen. And I was so weak, I couldn't even get up. And I rolled myself to the floor and I lie on the carpet. They would change it. And then they would literally sanitize the place and they tiptoe and go. And I struggled and I put myself back. I wouldn't even look at food. I wouldn't even look at drink. All I, did, I said, they would come and bring me some concussions and I will just drink it. I don't even ask. And I did that. And after a couple of weeks when I came through, I asked them, why were you tiptoeing? Why were you coming? And most often, whilst they were tiptoeing, I was looking at them. My whole being was in another world. I was seeing other things. I wasn't hallucinating. I was walking through the valley of shadow of death, seeing my loved ones who had died, seeing my friends who had died, all that I could see, I was embracing people. Seeing big waters and big rivers that I knew that if I crossed this river, that would be the end of me. I knew that. That close to be crossing it. And when I asked them, why were you tiptoeing? The answer is that this whole place smelled like death. And we were worried that one day we just come and open your door and we see you dead. But I wasn't worried. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And the few telephone calls that I managed to pick up first, and I said, that, look, I'm alive forever and ever. I have authority over death. Amen. And this is what Jesus Christ said in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And for you to have that confidence, to be able to say that at the verge of death, you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you don't, you don't even know how to pray. You don't even know what to say. And many people went on that conveyor belt of death just like that because they had no hope. They walk in darkness, but there's no light. So today, I'm finishing this message and I just want you to understand that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to recommend it to you. I want to recommend him to you that this Christmas you be your Lord and Savior. If you want to give your life to this Jesus, either for the first time or rededicate your life to him so that this Christmas will be a defining moment for you to start a new year with something powerful, something hopeful, something meaningful, then I want you to stand on your feet and I'll pray with you right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, who is that going to either accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior for the first time, or you know Jesus Christ, like the people, of, the people during the time, or many people in this country, but they have no relationship with him. And today, if you want to have a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ, this Christmas time, I want you to stand on your feet. I'm not going to catch you. I'm just a human being. I'm not going to do anything. I just want to pray with you. Who want to dedicate his or her life to Jesus Christ? Who want to give his or her life to Jesus Christ? If you want to just stand up, it's all about you. When I was at the verge of death, it was just me. With my family, we're not part of it. Just me. It could be just you tomorrow. Does anyone want to give your life to Jesus? 
Does anyone want to dedicate your life to Jesus? I give you one more chance. I won't ask anybody to close their eyes. I want to see who is brave, who value his or her life, and we want to pray with you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Whatever you do, maybe you are feeling shy, but when you are dying, you will not feel shy. Maybe you are afraid, but when you are at the point of death, you will not be afraid anymore. But whatever you do, you walk out of this place, don't forget to say this prayer, even now after me. Shall we pray? Dear Jesus, today I come before you. I see myself as human. And Jesus, you are God. And you are Lord. Today, I bring myself before you and I ask you to be my Lord and my God. Today, I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Today, I rededicate my life to you. Today, I want to surrender to your Lordship. Jesus, you are my King. Today, I accept your sacrifice on the cross on my behalf. Father, today search me and try me. If there's any wicked ways in me, forgive me of all sins and set me free from the power of sin. And today, being the beginning of days for me, that this Christmas, that Jesus Christ, the Word of God, made flesh, the Son of God, will be my Savior, my Lord, and my King. Today, I'm prepared to follow Jesus, who is the way, who is the truth, and who is the life. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me now and forevermore. Amen. Now, I would like you to pray for yourself. This time, you're not following me. I want you to pray your own quiet prayers. Pray and talk to God. And say, God, I'm sorry that I have not celebrated Christmas the way it ought to be celebrated. I haven't worshipped you and celebrated you as King, God, and Lord. Pray those quiet prayers before God, asking for forgiveness. And as you do that, pour out your heart to him. Every need that you have on your heart. Ask him to come and meet them. I know God is able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able. My God is supernatural God. Even as you repent of those things, not having celebrated Christmas, not having worshipped Jesus, as God, King, and your Lord. I want you to pour out your heart to him. Whatever is on your heart, whatever is your need, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, today I want to pray for your church and your people. Right now I'm praying, oh God. Father God, hear the prayers of your sons and daughters. Father, today they've come before you They are pouring out of their heart the needs that is in their minds. Father, I pray that Father God stretch forth your hand and meet them at the point of need. Father, hear their stories. Hear their stories. I'm calling you to be part of it. Some are stories for healing. Father, I'm calling your name, O God, for healing. Some are stories for financial breakthrough or financial provision. I'm calling your name to provide for them. 
Father God, some are calling your name, oh God, for restoration in relationships, oh God. Today I pray in the name of Jesus and I call for a relationship to be restored. I pray for the sons and daughters to be restored to their parents and parents to be restored to their sons and daughters. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm calling for restoration of relationship. Father God, between husband and wife, between friends and colleagues, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, restore that in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, I pray that your name will be glorified in the lives of your people. Father God, some also they need emotional healing. The year has been long. And they've seen the roller coaster of life and the pain that it brings. Father, I'm praying for emotional healing. I'm praying for anyone who's oppressed by pain to be set free right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.